The Progressive Governors Forum has resolved to intervene in the current crisis rocking the All-Progressive Congress APC in Edo and Ondo State ahead of the governorship election in both states. Chairman of the Forum, Governor Abubakar Bangudu of Kebi, said this in a statement released in Abuja on Sunday. The governors have collectively agreed to work to ensure strengthening fair and democratic internal party mechanism for selection of party candidates in all elections, especially in respect of Edo and Ondo State's 2020 governorship election. He recalled that the National Working Committee of the APC had on Saturday affirmed the disqualification of Governor Godwin Abasaki and two other aspirants who had earlier been disqualified by the screening committee. We do have in the studio Liboros Oshama, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for staying with us. Let me start from what the comrades said about Edo State operating without a um, constitutionally inaugurated um, parliament. Uh, w w how do you react to that? Yeah, it's, um, it's um, um, shameful. It is uh, um, laughable. It is incredible um, that um, in a democracy that um, a governor will be this high-handed and um, in, it happened in Bauchi also, but mind you, Bauchi is a PDP state. And um, eventually the governor had to retrace his step and uh, find a middle ground to reconcile in all the, you know, warring parties. And then um, the house was properly inaugurated. Um, for those states, I also would point accusing fingers at um, the national chairman of the party for also not playing a very you know, impartial role in ensuring that there's a, a middle ground, even though the buck stop at the table of the governor, uh, who you know, knowing fully well that he would still you know, need the support of his party, ought to have you know, um, allowed his personal sentiment and ambition you know, take second stage and reconcile you know, with his party members, but his refusal to inaugurate, you know, those 14 members today is, is costing him, has cost him partly, you know, his ticket from his party. And then it's also, you, you know, uh, so unfortunate that, you know, the other governors who are with him, what they call them, um, I, I find it difficult using that word progressive governors because really there are no progressive governors in Nigeria. Okay, and, and, talking and, and about so, progressive governors, um, yeah. he's um, saying just Saturday, the National Working Committee affirmed disqualification of Obaseki, and then they are saying that they are going to work to see how they can resolve the crisis within the APC in the state. Do you think that is a possibility at yes. this stage that the crisis will be resolved, or is it partially resolved with the disqualification of Obaseki? They've thrown Jonah out of the ship, so <laughs> with Jonah out of the ship, uh, what they need nice to talk to all the other members that um, Jonah had, um, by Jonah I mean Obaseki, had um, um, issues with and so and find a way of bringing them back to work with the party and then there are some people who have been sitting on the fence in this crisis who feel there's need for peace you know definitely they would um, you know reach out to those people also and I also am also aware that uh, you know um, the national chairman you know did offend a lot of people um, before the 2016 election, he also had been doing some form of reconciliation. So you always hear parties say they want to do reconciliation, but there are some people that will leave that cannot be reconciled, maybe until after the election. And for political parties in Nigeria, all that is consistent, is interest. One would have, who would have expected that today, the same uh, Mizer Yamu that uh, Oshomole was so vociferous against, there was no name Oshomole didn't call Mizer Yamu, in the 2016 election, who would have expected that today Oshomole would be reconciled with Isaiah Yamuhan, even be promoting him? Who also would have expected that the PDP, the PDP that were so, in fact, they made Obaseki's certificate an issue during the 2016 campaign, but today they're almost admitting him, you know, as a, 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 a candidate on their party. And so for politics in Nigeria, reconciliation is always, you know, at the table. They, 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 they would quarrel, they would be at each other's throat, and the very next minute they are reconciling. The only okay. problem is that the people, their supporters, who probably would have killed themselves for, for and on their behalf, you know, would not live to see that reconciliation. So that's okay. the saddest part. Uh, I'm told we have a uh, public affairs analyst, uh, Alester Wilkos, uh, joining us. Uh, thank you very much, um, Alester. 
Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, Liberals, good morning. Hey, I greet you, Atablaman. All right. Uh, quickly, why should Nigerians be invested in what is going on in Edo State? Well, um, there are various segments of Nigeria that should be interested in various segments of the issue. Some, out of curiosity, uh, just want to get the news and keep being uh, happy. Some, out of busybody, uh, just to know where the pendulum swings and then take sides. And then some out of genuine concern, maybe out of genuine concern for the uh, 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 development of politics in our country. Because really and truly, uh, I just joined and I was able to get a few things from liberals. Uh, politics in Nigeria has really, really not grown to the level where we will have seen a situation where people will have honor, will have stability, and then uh, will, will remain focused on the ideology. So uh, there are other uh, shares of opinion, I mean, that wants to also say, let's see how they kill themselves. And so everybody's interested. Because right now, uh, what takes everybody's attention is uh, what is happening in the political sphere, both politics and economy. Uh, moreover, when they see this lockdown, that businesses and uh, offices have been, have been out of place. So it's quite worrisome. I am, I'm interested, but, but to the extent that uh, it, it still uh, baffles me, how we play politics in this country that after 21 years of uh, unbroken democracy the main ingredient of uh, ideology in politics is still absent well it is the, the, is the, the politics we definitely have at the moment and uh, that's why we have you here to help make sense of what is going on do you see a jumping of ship at this uh, time for obaseki because uh, from um, information available he has been speaking with Atiku, he was a former presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Akwaibam State, we know, is a stronghold of the PDP as well. And then we also hear he's talked to a few other governors. Do you see him becoming a candidate of the PDP in Edo State? Well, as for jumping ship, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't pull that out because uh, it also shows one thing. Uh, the man, uh, uh, the, the politician, and then the man of, uh, at the eye of the storm, Baseke, has no credibility. So, and then the, the parties he wants to jump to, especially the PDP, has no ideology. And so they will be happy to welcome him in order for them to either uh, 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 smack the APC or see how they can also use him as a bait to wrestle power in those states. So, jumping out, it's on the card. Because already, even before now, we, 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 there are snippets that he's been making consultations, white consultations, and they're having that as a second option. Um, if I had to talk about Obaseke, I, don't, I, 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 I really don't hear of uh, liberal's position, but sincerely, my position is the fact that uh, uh, Obaseke has proved himself not to be a politician of note, but just a businessman or a, someone I would call an undertaker who do not have something serious in terms of political ideology. You know, uh, Edo State has, has, uh, has been in turmoil ever since uh, maybe in the last uh, one year or two, as in well, some of some 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 of his supporters <laughs> will disagree with you. They would say that I mean he's been he if if he hasn't been working, he wouldn't have people that are all in support of him About and saying, condemning uh, what they say is uh, a victimization and oppression, um, uh, autocratic um, autocratic tendencies, if you please, of the APC leadership uh, when it comes to Obasanjo. Um, uh, uh, Felicity, you, all, you always know that if, if, if it is by performance that people support a leader, then there are some states, uh, let me not mention the states, that uh, shouldn't have anybody supporting them, supporting their leaders. Uh, Abia State should be one of them. Abia one. If it's by performance that uh, Nigerians or politicians support their leaders, people support a leader based on bread and butter. And we must get that, and we must, we must understand that fact. So long as you are an appointment, so long as you have what the leader has of what to give to you, the people really do not matter in most instances. It is what the leader has to give to you and how much is able to muster. Right now, right now, uh, Obasanjo might think he had support until when the chips are down. It has happened in several places. Uh, Ambody used to have supporters too. Ambody uh, in Lagos had supporters up when, even when you knew that the game was almost up. 
He has supporters who goes to town to sing his praise. To, uh, to yeah, he was a performing governor. But when the chips right. are down, what happens? Yes, um, should um, um, Liboras so wants to chip in. Uh, let, let's hear what he has to say quickly. Yeah, um, I want to quickly um, react to the question you asked, Alesta, on the um, oppression um, against uh, Gov Governor Obaseki. If you talk about injustice and oppression, God will know Obaseki also had melted out, you know, so much oppression on, on um, elected leaders also. I say for me, it's just um, getting his comeuppance, comeuppance from, um, you know, his party also. It's governor who refused to inaugurate 14 members of a House of Assembly. That's not justice. Irrespective, no matter the irreconcilable differences, let's talk politics. And I expect if you, if you, if you tie a corn around, a maze around your neck, you know, don't um, expect people, don't be, don't uh, be angry when you when the chicken starts running after you. When Obaseki came on board, he had two options: one, to either align with the people with development by true development, you know, because according to him during the campaigns, he wants to turn a uh, state to Dubai, but he or you know, kotow the line of those that brought him to office. But he refused to do either. He wanted to build his own empire with a few cronies using state resources also. And that's why I said there is no governor that you can call progressive governor in Nigeria today. And he's one of them. So that's why you see him desperately moving from APC to PDP, just the same way Isayamu moved from uh, PDP to APC. They are all desperate. And if I have my way, all of them should be done away with in those states. Alistair, back to you. Um, your final thoughts on this as we wrap up. No, certainly, I think uh, uh, Libras is not far from the reality. Uh, I'm disappointed. I would say very clearly, I'm disappointed about uh, 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 what, do you call it? what do you call it now? Obaseke. He never did any of them. He never aligned, uh, aligned with any of the, I don't, I, of the options he had. Rather, he started fighting everybody that thinks he's perceived enemy. Uh, like Lucas pointed out, you have a situation whereby uh, uh, the House of Assembly is polarized. You, you inaugurated nine members in the middle of the ninth. For whatever reason, I think, for whatever reason that you have against anybody, for whatever reason, you don't do such illegality to an institution like the State, State House of Assembly. In fact, the pictures show that one of the person came for inauguration was on a, was on a nika and a bathroom slippers. That would tell you how desperate the basket was. And then he pulled down the houses of so many people. He accuses uh, the AP national chairman, tried to remove him, do all the maneuvering to remove him from office, so, so, so how desperate can a man be? So it, it will even be a bigger liability to PDP, sincerely. And I think if PDP is a party that has uh, some, uh, some, some honor and some that, that still willing to uh, the stuff, I mean, get back some credibility for themselves, a man like a basket should not be somebody that they should talk with. Because even the base of disclosure of basket by the APC was very, very clear. And if PDP goes ahead to accept it, which they will likely do, because, uh, like, uh, like uh, Libra said, it's all about interest and how you can uh, dig deep. I mean, right, the people now want to eat some of the money that is left in their the, the treasury, so they will deceive him and deceive him and make him spend more money on their on their head, and then hopefully at the end of the day he might still fail. So the class of his is quite clear. I mean, he he shot himself on the foot by presenting those certificates that. Even if even anybody that sees them will have issues with him. So even if he goes to PRP, NAP, or Old, and any of the parties, I think they will be very, very skeptical in giving him their ticket because no matter what happens, even if he goes ahead to present those certificates to anywhere and win the election, all right, and win the election, he will uh, be, uh, the, the experience might come to play. So I sympathize with him. He should play the issue, eat the humble pie like Ambode did, and then see what he can survey that of his political life, if any. If it can't have any best, jumping around right now might just be a detriment to a final to his political career. Um, and uh, I'm, I am really I sorry to interrupt, but that's the much time all let us um, on this uh, segment of the news. Thank you very much uh, for your time and your insight. It's always my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And of course, uh, Barista Liboros, thank you very much for coming to our studios. My pleasure.